All right. So before we get to Rex and Ed and Dexter, our special guest today for Cobra Kai, let's meet our wonderful pregame hosts, Ronnie and Kami. Good morning. Rise and shine, Woo! everybody. <laughs> Hello, hello. Welcome to another beautiful day. Um, like beautiful looking, I would say. Like whatever's going on in your life, it might not be beautiful, but sometimes it's beautiful looking, at least from where I can see in my little my little sliver of a uh, of, of the world here. Kami, what's what's the sliver Your of the window. world? My little my little window. I mean it's a pretty big window. Well if you if you guys love all of this um, totally relative banter, uh, don't forget to check out Rise and shine. Kami, this is big news. You probably already know this could because you know we're on the same team. But I'll tell you again. Don't forget to check out the new episodes and the podcasts of Rise and Shine every week because we have new shows dropping on YouTube every mm-hmm. Tuesday on our YouTube channel. We're going to have a whole YouTube channel at Rise and Shine FAC. Rise and Shine Phil, I'm creative. That's Rise and Shine FAC. And on Wednesdays, download our podcast wherever you get your podcasts and uh, just look for rise and shine with film creative youtube tuesday podcast wednesday and uh please support rise and shine um yeah how can I... they support rise and shine Kami? yeah you guys can definitely support us to keep producing these beautiful talk shows on saturday mornings uh venmo us at Phil M creative and uh by the way i saw just a little glimpse of the amazing work that Jeremiah did with our edited um, YouTube vids. I'm so excited for everyone to see it. We're going to actually look like we know what we're doing. so beautiful. Shout out Jeremiah. Shout out Jeremiah. And uh, we are also right now we are live on Facebook. So shout out to our top fan, Shauna Marie. Good morning, Shauna. Hi, Hi, Shauna. Um, Hello, hello. And also for everybody, not not for Shauna. Shauna probably already knows this by now. But for everybody else, don't forget that Rise and Shine is under the Philam Creative umbrella and that we're a registered nonprofit. We're like a legit nonprofit, Kami. Did you know that? We're like a five I heard. <laughs> we have to do Philam paperwork. Creative it does accept so gifts. Technical. And, oh, yeah. Philam Creative celebrates every single holiday. And we accept <laughs> all the gifts for the holidays, especially if you can't gift money. Gift your time. Gift your like on Facebook. Gift a follow. Gift a repost. But if you can... Uh, gift money, Kami. How do how does people how does one gift money to us? One can gift money to at Phil Am Creative. That's the at sign at Phil Am Creative. F I L M A M C R E A T I V E. Wow, I can spell. <laughs> um, and uh, you guys just hit us up too. You can message us. Let us know how we can um, provide you with better shows. Uh, what you want to see in our shows and nice. wait wait better are shows you... what, what are, we, are these wait. shows not good enough if you're looking to well you the know there's always room for improvement you mm. know you mean like get rid always, of veronica um, you know, i don't she... know i've kind of gotten a liking to her but <gasps> she oh, could man, evolve don't say that she don't could evolve that. you know she'll she'll hear you she got ears like a bat um <laughs> wherever she is which uh she well yeah. i'm into vampires ronnie just so you know nice nice <laughs> well if you are yeah. also into vampires and helping us uh have our bring our little show up a notch uh our venmo handle came just said at film creative venmo yes. us if you don't do venmo uh, message us because Kami can yes. walk you through the process. So, hey, hey, Ronnie, are we are we still recruiting leaders for 2021? I can't that, remember. That is a great question, disembodied voice. Um, 2021 is upon us, and if you cannot donate a like or a comment, if uh, you cannot donate money, but you're really interested in uh, being a part of the cause, being uh, working alongside people like myself or Kami, and you're a creative or even better if you're not a creative and you're just really organized and good with like managing some some freaky creatives uh hit us up at Phil and Creative still because we're still looking for you to join us uh be a part of our team uh, put on some really great events for the community uh 2021 is going to be special because um we're probably going to be still here in this space and uh um you don't have to be LA based you don't have to be SoCal based you can be anywhere there's internet connection just as long as you have 
the time and the will to uh, be a part of something and, and be a part of something for the community. So wait, uh, wait, wait, Ronnie, that means that like you could be in San Francisco, for example, oh. like an editor and we don't even have to like beat you and you could be part of Philam Creative. Is that what you're saying? I am saying that is a very specific set of uh, things. And if you fit that mold, we want you. If you are from, you know, San Leandro, Cupertino, San Jose, uh, Vallejo, California, where my people are at. Um, Manila? Where, Manila, Philippines, New York, New York, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, <laughs> some places in Florida. I don't know Florida very well. Sorry, guys. Uh, we want you. So if you got some creative ideas and you have a drive, you need a platform to uh, share it, hit us up. Uh, Kimmy will... Kami, we'll find your message and we'll we'll talk. I, we will guide you through and put you on the path. It's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be lit, y'all. Uh, without further ado, we want to go ahead and introduce uh, your host for Rise and Shine with Philip Creative. We got Senora Ed and Senor Rex. Come on out, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Rise and shine, Good there, rise and gentlemen. Hello, All Facebook right. world. Hello, YouTube world. Hello, Zoom world. Hello, world. Hello, senorita. Then Rex is saying hey to the ladies already. <laughs> I'm just I'm echoing Ronnie's, uh, you know, senors. I'm sorry. Our, 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 our stage director, Jeremiah, is probably, Ronnie, if you can't, you know, boisterously laugh, <laughs> that'd be really good for posts. <laughs> yeah, Felice Navidad. <laughs> all right well whether whether you're watching us on facebook youtube or or whether you're watching a pirated version of, of rise and shine thank you welcome rex today is a cobra kai day are are were you a big fan back in the day rex of the karate kid movies i have to know i remember watching the first one in the big theaters and in the drive-in yeah. um yes remember when drive-ins were you know the big thing and I, I was just, I think part of the reason I watched the Karate Kid movies um, was the great storyline, but also of Mr. Miyagi, one of the, uh, you know, Pat Morita, one of the very first Asian American actors that I saw on the screen. And uh, that kind of, profound, it hit me effectively, you know, Amen. so, uh, but a great storyline, um, had a crush on the girlfriend. Um, Didn't we all? On Elizabeth Shue. Elizabeth Shue. Yeah, she still looks great today. Yes, yes. <laughs> Some people um, age, don't age. age yeah, don't just age. a great coming of age type so were of movie. You, so so in the in the spirit of compare and contrast, were you were you team Elizabeth Shue or team Tamlin Tomita? <sighs> and that's <laughs> tough, man. That is <laughs> tough. Both both movies had its had its own strong merits and everything. And again, had a crush on Tamlin Tomita's character. <laughs> How about uh, speaking of Tamlin Tomita and as Rex said, the Senoritas? So Ronnie and Kami, were you guys also big Karate Kid fans back in the day? Absolutely, Ed. Uh, such a good film to grow up with. You know. Um, it's one of the few films that I believe shares to all of America what Asian culture is like a little bit. And that's what I love about that film. I want to share, uh, Shauna Marie on Facebook uh, said, Mr. Miyagi is iconic, great representation. Yeah, absolutely. Like that, that film is like, uh, not only do you get in the first one, you got, you got Mr. Miyagi, you got to, the world got to meet Mr. Miyagi. But then in the second one, he goes to Japan and then you get to spend like a bunch of time there. Um, I, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those things where you're like, oh, right. Like we can actually have this character. And um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan too. I actually bought the DVD for my baby brother. Um, awesome. When he was like, I don't know, I think he was like six or seven. And then um he like he kept watching it on repeat so it was like this this kid was born in like the 2000s and then he was like all of a sudden like into karate kid karate kid and then uh just a just a short decade late a few decades later you got well you got a special show that came up and we're going to talk about that um today with our special exactly guests. 
Now, now before now, I know that uh, I know in a couple minutes, Ronnie and and Kame are going to go. But before we get there, um, just to everyone who's watching, at the end of this episode, we're going to play Karate Kid Cobra Kai trivia. So uh, you do want to stay tuned for that. And uh, you know, actually, before we bring our guests out, one other question: How, how about the third and the fourth installments of Karate Kid? Did we watch these? I, I'm just curious. <sighs> That I mean, one, those ones slip uh, past my radar, I will say. <laughs> but hooray for Hillary Swank! Yeah. I mean, talk about representation. Even we were, we were, as as the feminist that I am, we were kind of we were crawling, we were crawling there, we were we were we were slowly making our way. So, I mean, Hillary Swank did high kicks. That was the fourth kicks. one. Yeah, that was yep. the fourth. Yes, she did high kicks. So you know, uh, Gina Carino can do MMA. Ed, but remind us what was the third. The third one is the one where uh, where uh, uh, that friend of Crease comes back to uh, help him reopen the dojo, and then and then oh, yeah. and then Daniel is he gets a free buy to the finals. He doesn't even have to go through the preliminaries. He just gets an automatic spot in the finals. It was kind of a hokey plot, but I guess between I, the, <laughs> I guess between the four of us, wasn't there another kind of Karate Kid? There was a Will Smith. That's Jackie the Chan yeah. thing, which I never actually watched that one. I saw that I one. I saw actually. that one too. Oh, really? Yes. yes. Yeah. How, how was that one? I liked that one a lot. Speaking I did too. of, I thank you, Kate. Thank you, Kami. <laughs> uh, speaking of representation, I'm always on the lookout for um, films that star uh, people of color in the leads, especially two people of color and like their dynamic and just kind of like showing the diversity in the world. And who doesn't love Taraji P. Henson? plays Jaden mm -hmm. Smith's mom. Mm -hmm. I can watch that woman all day do anything. So, you know, that's always a good one. And then they, they hang out in China for the most of the, and I, I really liked it because um, it was it was also very timely. I think that movie is underappreciated. So they, they went from Japan to China. Because the, like the Jackie, Jackie Chan's Mr. Miyagi, he's Chinese. So they, right. um, and he's it was just like, it was this commentary on like, um, cause to, to, just so you guys know, Taraji, and Taraji got a job in China, so they all had to relocate. So you had like a kind of fish out of water situation, but it's like Americans in China. And then that's that's where everything pops off. Um, so hmm. it's actually, you know what, guys? It's worth a watch. And I'm a huge Jackie Chan fan. Um, yes. Yeah, Jackie Chan is, is, if I could be an, if I could have like a guiding spirit force, it would probably just be Jackie Chan. Also super awesome. off topic, watch Jackie Chan's episode of like, cribs it's buried Ooh. somewhere in youtube <laughs> it is incredible jackie Ooh, chan's hella out. rich guys he's richer okay. than you guys than, than you. i mean like just think about it he's richer you. than us he, he's he's <laughs> way he's just a little richer than you ed his net worth is just a little higher oh and shauna says jaden smith was speaking chinese uh, yeah. don't, i'm not i don't remember which chi um if it was like mandarin or cantonese but he was and that's amazing to ask. And he was young. He was like a little baby back then. So he had to learn all mm -hmm. these like lines in, um, in uh, all these lines in Chinese. So good on you, Jaden. Love your album. <laughs> well, I guess it just um, speaks, you know, speaks to the concept of the Karate Kid itself, how it's lasted this long and how we're going to be talking about the, um, uh, the Netflix show, how it's the spinoff of that. And it's already what, season three? I Coming believe. up on season, season three, three, that's right. I We're uh, season three. the season premiere. Exactly. I love it. Hey, everyone. Rex here with Rise and Shine. Did you know that you have not one, not two, but three different ways you could check out the show every week? New episodes drop every Tuesday on our YouTube channel at Rise and Shine FAC. And you can listen to this podcast dropping every Wednesday by downloading Rise and Shine wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And if you want to watch us produce the show live, don't forget that we tape on Saturday mornings on Facebook Live, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So that's three ways you can improve your Rise and Shine diet every week. YouTube Tuesdays, Podcast Wednesdays, and live every Saturday on Facebook. Thanks again for watching and listening to Rise and Shine. And we're back. 
we're back. And um, those of you who are watching this live on Facebook, you get to see the uh, actual taped thing with all the behind the scenes stuff. And, uh, you know, we know that a lot of you are watching on Facebook. Don't forget, you can watch us on YouTube, which I know most of you are watching us right now on YouTube. And you can watch us or you can listen to us in our podcast on Wednesdays. So don't forget, live tapings on Saturdays, YouTube drops on Tuesdays, and then the podcast drops on Wednesdays. So Rex, that's three ways that you can rise and shine. With rise and shine <laughs> with us, everyone. Rise and shine. Fantastic. Do you, Rex, is it time to bring out our guest? What do you think? Yeah, let's bring him on. Okay, fantastic. So our guest is actually a friend Phil Am Creative, and that's our favorite kind of guest. Uh, he uh, has worked on such things as The Debut, which all our Filipino-American friends know about. He's also uh, edited for shows like Lizzie McGuire, Unfabulous, The Following, Psych, Arrow, DC's Legends of Tomorrow, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and currently you can see his work on Cobra Kai. So we want to go ahead and bring out our special guest today, who is the editor uh, for Cobra Kai season three, Dexter Adriano. I'm going to give him a big round of applause. Woo! Thank you, Dexter. Good morning. Rise and shine. Yeah. Magandang umaga. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Glad to be here. Welcome. Hey. Welcome. <laughs> welcome. We uh, we have known Dexter now for 11 years, or probably longer than that, as uh, he's come to all the Film Creative events in Los Angeles over the years and uh it's so happy it's so great to have you here today dexter but we got to ask before we get into the editing questions that i know a lot of our fans have today how big of a karate kid fan were you and how cool was it that you got a gig editing cobra kai oh i uh, <laughs> it, it it was kind of like really i don't know what i was really jazzed but also felt like a deep sense of irony because, well, you know, because like, you know, here I am, one of you guys, right? Mm -hmm. Fans. And then all of a sudden I get to play with, with new, new, you know, new mythology. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, that's what it feels like. I get to play in a, a you know, it's a, you know, it's like if I got a, you know, gig on Star Wars, on the Mandalorian, or something, <laughs> I get to play in the Star Wars universe. So it's so like, oh, I get to play in the Karate Kid universe. Like all of a sudden, those movies weren't movies anymore. I realized what these guys did was create the Karate Kid universe, and I was like, oh, this is cool. this is cool. You know, so I was really, I was really jazzed about it. Oh my gosh, yeah! Thanks, thanks, Dexter, for coming on. The last time you were physically with us, I believe, uh, you were a, pan a moderate for a panel that we put on the TV writers. Uh, oh, panel yeah, yeah, we yeah. did uh, around this time in December, yeah. and yeah. Uh, that was my first time meeting you and and just seeing what a what a career you had up until that point, and it's just blossomed uh, afterwards. Everything. I mean, I'm going to go back. That was back in 2006, I think. Is that in 2006? 2006 yeah we were still in its infancy as film creative like around seven years oh, or so yeah, and was, oh my god i was just i do i was doing uh, I, I think i was still doing a kid's show well or i might have just started on site i might have been right before site yeah and and we were we were i was just so appreciative that you came out uh and and did the tv writers panel with the community and they got to meet all of you and uh, that was such a fun night and it introduced and hopefully inspired uh, people back then to, you know, get into our industry and and just sharing your stories and your experiences uh, with the community and everything. And uh, look where you are right now. We're just so happy. Yeah. No. I mean, it's been. I mean, I you know, it was really just uh, people I knew mm -hmm. seeing if I was available or me, you know putting it out there that I'm available but you know it, it, it I mean it's one of the lessons to people out there if you think about it. one of the things about Hollywood is like you know once it, it's a little bit of a closed system mm -hmm. but once you get in that stream you're in the stream yep and when you're in that stream yeah. uh you know uh, you, all of a sudden it's like you have more bait and yeah. you're like and you're able to catch more things but the goal is to try and get into that stream and that that and that's the thing that 
you know, you have to sort of na- navigate, figure out. And, uh, but my, my approach has always been kind of laissez-faire about it because if you worry too much about it, yeah. it, it will, <laughs> you know, you, you, all of a sudden you're divorced and, and you know what I mean? You're, it, it gets, you can get consumed with the, uh, chasing the, uh, you know, uh, it's like you were going in circles almost in a way. Yeah. 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 You just, you just got to remind yourself while you're here. And for me, it's always like, I just want to do good work and work on good stuff. You know? Yeah. And I think the, the work is showing and people are taking notice and, you know, uh, they saw something in you uh, for the post-production team for the, for the news, for the show. Well, you know, it, it's really all those guys. I mean, the creators are the creators. You know, we, I, I kind of always view editors as sort of uh we're kind of like the the shepherd of of their ideas, so we have we have to keep faith to their to their, to their world. Vision. Yeah, and the thing is, long as long as you understand the world they're in, most of the time, it all makes sense. So it's not actually, in my mind, difficult to edit because I'm in the I'm what I've tried to do is look at it the way they're looking at it. So then I try to edit it the way they want to see it. Do you guys have like a almost a shorthand? kind of communication um yeah uh a lot of times it's i, I gotta say it's it's like i mean you you know either you guys would fit in well just like me because you know hearing you guys talk about karate kid and growing up these guys these creators are our, our age they grew up in, you know they grew up in jersey just fanboys <laughs> just like us they're just fanboys yeah. you know i mean i mean what, what do you expect from the guys who created harold and kumar yeah. you know i mean that's <laughs> That's, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, we get those guys. You know what I mean? That's like, yeah, Harold Cooper, that's us, man. You know, I mean, it's a little it's a little bit of an X-Gen hinted humor. And uh, and they just uh, and and so it wasn't hard to kind of see how they saw it, because, you know, all you have to do is be even a, a casual fan. You get it because Freddy Kid so uh, has such cult status. Now, now I have a question for you. So, so speaking as, I mean, obviously you're a fan and obviously as everyone who's watching the show knows that we're all fans, but does that affect your process? I mean, obviously you're an editor and this is Phil M creative and we're talking about the process. And I know that a lot of people want us to talk about, about, you know, the entertainment aspect of this, but as an editor, how does that affect your approach, your interaction uh, that you are a fan and you know the story and you you kind of have an idea or an assumption of what's happened. Does that have any kind of effect on how you do your work? Um, well, what I try to do is um, uh, I try to, you know, it's almost, it's kind of, I kind of learned this from, you know, having done, um, you know, uh, I did a couple of uh, uh, acting classes, you know, just to figure out that process, the, mm-hmm. You know, because you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of talk. Because you know, I was I was you know I was going to direct that. I, I I directed a web series a couple of years ago, and um, I wanted to get sort of prepared to deal with actors. You know, and you know when I when I started I started I did that I don't know about 10, 12 years ago, but it got me thinking more deeper emotionally about the characters when I read a script. And and before I was kind of operating kind of on a superficial level. But then I realized, oh, there's a deeper level, and that's where these guys are. So if you're there talking there, they know you're there with them. So it's a, it's, it's kind of like trying to project yourself into their world as as best you can. Um, but also, you know, if, if you have a wide variety of tastes, just like you know you all do, we, you know, we have this martial arts. It's it's the same taste. We all have the same taste, which is why it's working. Because you know they they've been given the keys and they're taking the car out to drive. Like, mm-hmm. We get the yeah, damn look at that car. You know what I mean? It's just cool. Uh, but yeah, that's what I try to do. I try to, I just try to. Uh, my process is trying to adapt myself to to what their inner workings are as much as possible. If if I if I if it's something like oh you're a you know you're a 49er fan oh you're a Laker fan then okay that's a point of way of being able to like. Okay, well, oh, you're a fan. Let's talk fan talk, and then let me figure out what you're all about. And it's just trying to find a place where you really relate with the, with the writer, or the creator, or the director, and then you have then an idea of their point of view. But also at the same time, they want you to have your point of view, because generally good directors are open to all. 
because they sit there and kind of like, because yeah, this doesn't work now. Because it might have worked conceptually, but now practically on the set, you're like, this doesn't work because we didn't foresee this. So now you have to adapt. What do you think? Well, you know, if I go to this angle and I do that, I can kind of recreate that same emotion. Oh yeah, let's do that. So then it becomes that kind of, and that becomes a shorthand. The shorthand to me is emotion and perform. So as the editor of, uh, of Cobra Kai, like how, how much interaction do you have with the actual, uh, you know, I mean, are you on set? Do you, do you get to show up there or are you strictly, uh, you know, in post no, later on? Like, no, I, it, it kind of depends on where they're shooting. Like on agents field, um, we were right across the street. Oh, we were wow. on the, we, we were, we were, um, um, we were at, we were at the studio at which they were shooting. So, uh, you know, we ate with the crew. We saw them every day. We walked onto the set, talked to the director, who our director was, had, if we had any thoughts or issues, or they came to see us. You know, we're part of the tone meeting um, uh, during prep. Um, so everybody's on the same page with what we're doing. And a lot of times, that's the first time I meet the director. Mm. Um, you know, and it was the first time I've ever uh, worked with a Filipino director, Lou Diamond Phillips. Oh, yeah. So, wow. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and, you know, and I told Lou that, like, hey, how funny is that? You know, uh, which was funny. It was just like, oh, oh that's the, like, um, but yeah, that's, um, you know, uh, if they're on the stage, same, if we're in the same place, then we'll mix with the crew, but they shoot in Atlanta. So I has, have, as of yet, been to the set or a met the crew. So I'm in one of those situations now. We are, you know, we are here in LA and they're all in Atlanta. And there, you know, if there was a rap party here, usually the rap party is where they shoot. But, uh, you know, we, we probably, we're certainly more than invited to fly out, but nobody's going to kind of know us on a day to day basis. Oh, yeah. You're, you're the guys who cut it in LA. Oh, you're the editor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, the directors, the directors know us because they have to come out and work out, work with us. So, you know, we get very familiar with the director. So they know who we are. Yeah, so for agents, then it brings that the whole concept of the dailies. You you guys got it literally on the, on the spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We um, you know, we could, well, and in some cases, you know, hey, come on, we're gonna shoot this thing. Let, let me let me, you know, what do you think? You know, it's like, oh yeah, that'll cover it. You know, just, they just want confirmation that the shot will work. You know, and that uh, is this this will work? Yep, this will work. You know, I can make this work. You know, or I like you know, if you catch if you get this angle and that angle, then we got the choice to do this. And they kind of and they go, oh yeah, yeah, let's do that. You know, how that many? You collaborate. How many episodes did uh, Lou Diamond Phillips uh, direct? Oh, he just uh, direct, he was just a guest director. Was like he a guest and directed. Yeah, um, he directed. Uh, I forgot the number. It's, been so long. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it, it's it's the one with Ming on the truck, and he's stuck with uh, you know with the evil Bolson. <laughs> or the bizarre, the the alter, the alter both, the alter both, both, and uh, and that was the episode. He directed. But wow. it was a really good episode. It was a very dreamy, and a little mm. bit romantic, and a little bit of uh, you know, about their relationship. You know. Exactly. We do have a uh, question here from uh, Shauna. Uh, in your career, which project was the most meaningful for you, both in scope? and in accomplishment? I would have to say the one I was on the longest was Psych. Because Psych, Psych is the one that taught me. Because Psych, Psych was the one where they did so many different genres and they did so, they, they were so creatively bold in trying different things that it was just kind of like all cultural things. We're doing a horror movie, we're doing a Hitchcock episode, we're doing a, you know, we're doing something. And, you know, so now all of a sudden, uh, you know, I did the Twin Peaks episode. So all of a sudden, I, I'm very familiar with, you know, I, I, I didn't before in the, in, his, in the first round. But when I did, when I watched all the Twin Peaks of that episode, it, it put me in that world. And then I kind of understood it. I went, oh, I get it. And, and then that, that started teaching me how to look at the material. And so psych. Psych was probably the most I owe to as far as uh, learning. Yeah. 
So uh, for people who are, uh, I mean, obviously in Philam Creative, we have a lot of aspiring editors. We have a lot of people who, who want to work in this field. What, what are some things that you can say to them, uh, you know, as they get their career started? Uh, just keep learning and playing. Just keep learning and playing and uh, try to go, um, try to, you know, understand what really feels good. You know, like in a very deep sense, like, you know, and, and hone that skill to see. And this is, you know, and try to learn how to find magic in the frame. Because that's what you're doing when you're shooting. And that's what you're doing when you're editing. And that's what you're trying to lay the foundation for when you're writing. You're trying to create an, a scenario where magic happens, either emotionally, most of the time, you know, visual effects, that's part of it. But it's nothing without the emotion. It's nothing. It's nothing without I love you. I know. It's nothing without that, right? You know, I mean, you have to have that that magic. So learn to identify it, learn to cultivate it in yourself, and then learn what your voice is for that magic. That's what I would say. And then, you know, I know that this is a question that that a lot of editors are going to have. But you know, growing up, what did what did you like to watch? What were some of your favorite films? Who were some of your favorite editors that you liked watching their work? Um, well, I didn't really start studying editors seriously until I decided to be an editor, uh, honestly, in my 20s. You know, I was a, I got in here because, you know, uh, I was a big Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, oh, yeah. And, and then, <laughs> right, you know, and then all of a sudden, like, oh, Terminator, what's this, <laughs> you know? Uh, you know, and then it's off to the races, you know, on, like, what's the biggest, the baddest, and the most Arnold movie for a while. <laughs> And then, but then you had cool, but then, and then, you know, uh, well, Enter the Dragon. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I remember that. It, it, it kind of, you know, it kind of starts with Enter the Dragon. It, it kind of does, right? For a lot of us, it's Enter the Dragon. And then, boom, we're in, we're in, we're in movie, because, you know, we, we, my God, we have, a, you know, there's a superhero that kind of looks like us, you know, and it's like, and that's Ooh. what it felt like. That's what it felt like. Like what Marvel, what Marvel movie superheroes are for some generations now, that was our, that was kind of our prototype. And then it led us to all, and then Star Wars, bam, you know, and then it became like, what, what can we do with all these different things? And it's like, and Karate Kid is, you know, Rocky set in the karate world, you know, it was like, it was messing around with the formulas that work, you know, and, uh, you know, so, so yeah, that was like Rocky, but Raiders is the one that made me think I wanna, what are they doing? That was the one where I went, what are they doing? That's the first time I went, What's going on? Like, I really paid attention to the crap. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, but yeah, and then after that, it's just everything else after that. Like, you go, like, the, when the Matrix hit in the 90s, we're like, oh, you know, it's like, it, it, there's always something cool that comes along. You've got to wait. Rise and shine. Hey, everyone, this is Ed, and I got a question for you. Did you know that Rise and Shine is only one of the many things produced by Philam Creative? That's right, Philam Creative has been producing great stuff, like Rise and Shine, for over 10 years. If you want to learn more about the premier Filipino-American organization that has been the number one advocate for the Asian-American entertainment community for over a decade, then visit our website at philamcreative.org. That's philamcreative.org. Learn more about the organization that produces your favorite show, Rise and Shine. Okay, and we're back. And uh, we are going to bring out uh, Kami and Ronnie because we have a fun little thing planned for our uh, closing segment. Oh. Is that Surprise. Ronnie? Hello, Ronnie. I heard, Hello. I heard my name a few times. And, <laughs> where, is, uh, where is Kami? What happened to Kami? Where'd she go? Kami will be joining us. I think she's road tripping. She might be having some <laughs> tech problems. But we are actually going to play. All right. If you're ready for this, we're going to play with Rex and Ronnie and Dexter. Karate Kid Cobra Kai Trivia. Oh, That's man. right. All right. So we're going to play Karate Kid slash Cobra Kai trivia. Now, the questions have been uh, curated by a panel of me. And uh, 
so nervous. <laughs> and we're going to see between Rex and Dex and Ron X, who, <laughs> <laughs> who is the biggest aficionado, who has the PhD in Cobra Kai slash Karate Kid. All right. So oh, all right. Man. are you three ready for this? Probably not me. <laughs> Probably not. All right. I was going to gonna... say I'm kind of new. I'm kind of a new school Cobra Kai, like new school Cobra Kai fan. So yeah okay, <laughs> okay, i think i'm ready all right no whammies no whammies no and big bucks big bucks no whammies stop all right now uh each question is worth a certain amount of points so uh oh God, i guess oh my god that's it that's right that's right Wait, what, now, what, since what's the, what's the prize the prize is you get a philam creative t-shirt oh yeah. huh? Huh? All okay. right. Oh, yeah, I, I, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. And yes. and Rex and Ronnie are sitting here right now, going, "Well, crap, we already have that." Well, anyway, yes. that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> it's all on the way. line. <laughs> all right. So here we go. This question is worth one point. One point. Oh my here God. it is. Oh my God. All right. And I guess you just whoever answers it first. Say your name. Yes. Your name's exactly. your buzzer. All right. Here we go. In the original Karate Kid movie, Mr. Miyagi gives daniel a car for his birthday who is now the actual owner of that car oh my god <laughs> i'm like can we get a hint is it because it's like can i buy a vow at i'm like can i buy a vow i'm like did he give it to his like little protege that little like, did he know. give it to his protege did someone get because- okay I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what you can't I'll, lose I'll, points Dexter knows. Dexter knows. All right, I'm Dexter, trying to. Fr- I'm trying to figure out who was, uh, uh, Dexter Miguel. Uh, was it a red car? No, it was yellow. It's yellow, that yellow, yellow car. It's that it's yellow. It's the yellow car. Who, who but, owns it but, now? But some, yeah. Who owns the car? Like in real life. I'm sorry. I, I might not oh. have been clear. Oh. I'm oh, like, very no, sorry. It got trashed, guys. Spoiler who, alert. Who owns trashed. the car in real life? Oh, oh this like I don't know. Real. It's oh, not for real. Jay Leno. Oh, I'm gonna uh, guess. It's is it Jay Rex? Jay Leno. I said Jay Leno. Jay Leno. Jay Leno. All right. Rex, that's uh, a great guess, but you're wrong. Dex, how I mean, about you? I'm I'm a so uh, maybe the creator, the Cayman, Michael Cayman. Good, good guess, Dexter. You're wrong. And then oh, we have Ronks. All right. <laughs> okay, I was supposed to say Ronx. We have Ronx. <laughs> it was supposed to be Ronx. We have like, Ronx. I, I was feeling left out. Um what you got, so Ronex? I d- I decided to phone a friend, and my friend was Shauna Marie. She <laughs> says, she says in the comments, <laughs> Ralph Macchio. Line. Is it Ralph Macchio? All right. Is it the daddy himself, Ralph, Ralph Ladies Macchio? Ladies and gentlemen, we can give an assist to the great Shauna Marie because Ronx Ronex is correct. Yes, <laughs> oh. Ralph Macchio <laughs> you, owns the car. So you so just for t-shirt. for trivia purposes, uh, after the third movie, uh. They, the studio actually gave Ralph Macchio the car. Oh and shit! He, yeah, and he's kept it ever oh, since. And he's kept it ever since. It's been on. It's no, been on risers, yeah. and then they wanted to use it for the series. For the, for the series, yeah. And apparently, he was excited about it because since the studio was using it, they cleaned it up for him. They actually took care of the the rest of. They put a new engine in it and everything. So um, he got he got That's, a free. Uh, he got a <laughs> free. He he not only got a free car, he got a free restoration. 20 he got a free restoration. Years. That's, exactly. Yeah, that's what that's, that's where the tight. money's at. Same car. That's exactly. Wow. All right, so that's one point. I did point, not know that. One point for Ronnie. All right, I'm sorry, Ron X. Ron X. Ron X. All right, Ron now, X. this question is worth two points. Two points. Uh-oh. All right, here we go. Samantha and McGill had their first date at the same place that Daniel and Allie had their first date in the original Karate Kid movie. What was the name of the place where both couples went for their first oh, date? Shit. Oh, man. Oh, my God. I think I know this. Ron, Ron, can I Ron buy X. Val? Ron, Ron, Ron X. X. What I, mean, you got? I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. The, uh, oh, God. Okay, I don't know the yeah, I don't know the actual name of the thing, but was it like mini golf? Did they go mini it, golf? It was, but you got to know the name. You got to oh know God. the name. I got to buy <laughs> Val. I got to buy Val. Rex is stuck on the Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> It's a little putt putt golf place. I don't know what is a generic name for. for can we golf? like uh, let's make a deal? Oh, you know, it's uh, what we call it? Uh, not golf and stuff. Whoa, Rex. Golf and give stuff. Rex the point. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> it. no, that's it. It's golf and stuff. It's golf because I kept thinking, oh, wait, it's something and stuff. 
it's something in stuff. I forgot. Ladies and gentlemen, Rex has fumbled his way to two points. <laughs> two. We could. That was a two point question. We couldn't have scripted that one better. Oh my goodness. All right. So the score is Rex two, Dexter zero, and Ron X one. All right. Here we go. Don't worry. There's there's eight more questions. There's it's really more. Ron X and oh. Shauna. Really? Here we go. I, I know it's a tag team. We got, tag we, got wrestling. we got wrestling going on here. All right, yeah, here yeah. we go. Third question. This is also a two-point question. All right, here we go. In season two of Cobra Kai, Daniel asks Kreese how his knuckles are doing. What is this in reference to? Oh, uh, that's when uh, Mi um, Mi Miyagi stepped out of the way and hit his hand. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Dexter wow. got it. He got it. Points. We got a close match eggs. going on here. Oh, wow. Uh, that was off the dome, too. You got it. I'm going to give you guys some additional trivia. Uh, actually, I would guess that a lot of Karate Kid fans do know this. That scene, which was at the beginning of Karate Kid 2, that was supposed to be the ending of Karate Kid 1. But they, they saved it. And they uh, kept it for Karate Kid 2. And was also shown at the beginning of Karate Kid 3. I don't know why they keep rehashing this stuff but anyway but the it's bottom line is our special guest it. dexter has two points he's tied for the lead with fumbling rex <laughs> ron x and shauna are uh pulling the the back here they got Ooh, the, we're a team the back. So I need that two, right. two, one. all right here we go here we go next question this is a um let's see this is a oh Okay, this is a three-point question. Here we go. Uh, three points. Uh, In season two, Johnny's old friend Tommy dies. How do we see him for his final scene? <sighs> this is a tough one. That's why it's three. Is this, like a, a, is this like a Grey's Anatomy kind of thing? I was um, like, what do you mean? How do we see? Can, can I get clarification on the question? Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll just repeat it. How about that? Uh, That's not so, Well... <laughs> How, oh, how is he shown in the final scene? Or what, what's happening in the final scene? Oh, oh, uh, Ron X featuring Shana Marie. Oh, God, okay. <laughs> um, maybe they did a Godfather type of flashback. Well, yeah, they know. did a flashback, but then he was getting he was getting CPR in the forest. Um, and then, oh, oh and then they were zipping up the body bag. And then there was like that voiceover. And here comes the tag team. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert. They were, there was a, there was a flashback they were they were doing he like died in the forest he had a heart or like his heart gave out they were zipping up the body bag while they were he was doing a voiceover or something okay. but they were shipping up zipping up the body bag you see okay this is this is kind of like what happens if the director is in your earpiece which one <laughs> have an earpiece yeah. and she's getting some really bad information so <laughs> i'm going to give her, i'm going to give her I half that scene. i'm going to give her half credit for that so <laughs> she's going to get she's going to get so, 1.5 points that is so teacher of like uh, that giving was, partial credit i'm giving partial credit that's right i'm a teacher <laughs> mr m has spoken so so what happened was that's what happened shot. was um he was carried out when he died in a body bag and the re inside reference to that is that he was the guy in the original Karate oh, Kid that's right. who made that's that right. line. Oh, yeah. Get him and a body has... bag. Oh, yeah. And, and so that was yeah. their little yeah. So that yeah. was their little tribute. That, that was that was that was that was the connector. Was the <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're yeah. a fan, I, I, he I, said it I, such I, in the background, but you could still yeah. hear him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get him a body yeah. bag. Yeah, before yeah. the final. Yeah, that's, move. Yeah, that's that's the whole gag right there. Yeah. All right, now I think totally forgot about that. I think wow. Shauna deserves half a shirt for that. <laughs> we'll get so her a nice crop. So the current score is Dexter two, Fumbling Rex two, and Ronnie slash Shauna two and a half. Two and a half. I get two and a half. I, I gave her a one point five points. All right. This that was is a lot a, of detail, guys. And, all right. And here's extra a, points because I cried during that scene. Here's a one point question. One point question. What Los Angeles suburb? does the original karate kid originate from which is also where johnny currently lives during cobra kai right x featuring shani marie oh my god so what you got I think, you? I think does this count as a suburb is it Reseda? ladies California? and gentlemen ronnie uh, you're right is ah. clearly in the league. you're right she has three and a half points ah. i don't think she i think she ditched shauna for that Reseda. i don't know no, no, yeah. shauna, i knew it was in the ears, valley though. but didn't know exactly in Reseda. all right so uh, let's see. Let's keep going here. Two points. Two points. Wow. In the third Karate Kid movie, I know, third. 
In the third Karate Kid movie, Daniel becomes a two-time champion by winning the All Valley Under 18 Karate Kid Championship again. How many times did Johnny win it? Oh, shit. Um, oh, wow. It was... Is this the Daily Double, Ed? I know. It's two points. Like... It's two points. <laughs> How many times? Wow. I'm kind of drifting because, he, because there was someone before Johnny. God, this is in the third one, too. Okay, hold on. It's like yeah, number. It's I want num- oh, well, I'm, I'm going to throw a number out there. That All right, what you got? Some, for some reason, I want to say five times. All right, that is incorrect. Ooh. Rex Ooh. and Ronnie. Or I'm sorry, Rex and Ronnie slash Shauna. <laughs> uh... um, is, it, is it three? My girl Shauna is saying it's three. Incorrect. Oh. Uh, incorrect. Is I'll, it higher or lower than five? Are you, I, I are you allowed to This is not the that? price is right where oh we're going God. higher, higher, lower, lower. Um, I didn't really see the third one, but I remember, I think, from the, it's a, from the first you actually, movie. You actually know this from the first one. Yeah. I was going to reference that because Johnny had won it a few times before Daniel like became prominent in the movie. All right. So how I'm many? I'm going to say... Concern. I'm going to say six or seven. I'm going to say all six. Right. All right. You're all wrong. <laughs> this is this is, this is is an embarrassment to rise and shine. Uh, we're going to have to have Jeremiah edit this out. <laughs> Jeremiah is going to have to edit this. And post. Edit out so we look like we all know right, all the so, so Johnny is also a two-time champion. Now, uh, oh, so that, yeah, right. now Shauna. So oh, I'm sorry. Five. Not Shauna. Ronnie. Mm-hmm. Ronnie. Um, you Funny. could have argued. You could have argued that Johnny has it three because uh, McGill wins it, so that would make so as the sensei, uh, Johnny won it again. But we're not going to count. Does that. that count though? Exactly. Yeah, well, so, that's, so that's why we won't count it. So yeah, yeah usually like, it gets yeah, awarded yeah. to the sensei. Right. The so karate, the, yeah. So the dojo yeah. won it, but mm-hmm. in reality, it's McGill. Yeah. yeah. Do yeah. we have to know karate yeah. rules too? <laughs> We have to All know right, here we go. Standard Let's... Reseda Valley karate rules. <laughs> okay, this is a this is a one point question. There's just to let you guys know, there's four questions left. All right, one point oh, question. Who did Johnny get a friend request from at the end of season two? Hold on, Dexter Alley Mills. I'm sorry, what'd you say? <laughs> I said Dexter Alley Mills. All right, what you got? <laughs> he just said it. Oh, Alley Mills. Oh, Dexter Alley. My bad. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, he's got was that what, was that a one point? I I can't remember. What one pointer. A one point. All right. One po- so one pointer. All right. So Dex has three. Ronnie has a questionable three and a half. Oh boy. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and Fumble Rex has two. All right. So this is this is tight. This is tight. Wow. All right. Here we go. Three questions left. Three questions left. This is a two point question. Two point Ooh. question. William Zabka, who plays Johnny Lawrence, mm-hmm. had no martial arts training prior to the Karate Kid movies, but he was an accomplished athlete in a sport. What was he an accomplished athlete yeah. in? I'm going to take a guess, Rex. Mm-hmm. Track and field? Eh. Oh. We're talking like Johnny from like... What like was real it? life. William, William Zamka. Okay. So what, what in real life was he an accomplished athlete in? Oh, it's probably my second guess is going to be right, but I'm not going to say. Well, we can't say it now. But, you, but, you, I know. But you're, saying that, but you're saying not a martial art, right? No. It, yeah. It's not a martial art. But in a real sport. Is it a team sport? Are we allowed to? Am I allowed to? No, this is not, uh, what do you call that? <laughs> uh, to tell the truth. Oh, my God. <laughs> you can ask questions. We need to put some Jeopardy music in here. And, oh uh, I know, I will. To Alex Trebek. Okay, I'm I will like bring trying that to think, in. I'm trying to think of Daddy Johnny's physique, and I'm trying to think of what he looks like he would be good at. Like, yeah, he's he like a real athlete. He doesn't look like a like a football player or a basketball player. I feel like, unless he is a basketball player, I don't know. Oh, boy. Is that your guess? <laughs> is it Brown X featuring Sonia Marie? Is it basketball? <laughs> oh, my God. Ed. All right. Dexter, <laughs> guess, though. it's all you want Okay, I'm just gonna go go out. I'm just gonna be out there. With you. What do you got? Dance, dancing. No, no. All right, <sighs> uh, Jeremiah, you're gonna have your work cut out for you for the next. Wait, can uh, I have another guess? Uh, Shana, Shana has a <laughs> so guess. So there's no points here anymore. Ro- yeah. well, uh, All right, fine. What you, what you got? Oh, um, is it soccer? 
No. No. It's wrestling. Those are all the sports. It's like, wrestling. Oh, wrestling. Wrestling, wrestling. Oh, I was, my gosh. Was a, not like sense. WWE, but he was a wrestler. Yeah, I was going to say it was the either arts. tennis or wrestling. I know. I, I I was reading. I was reading it up, and they they were the thing I was reading did not consider wrestling a martial art. I should have, uh, which is which is interesting. But anyway, <laughs> all right. So no one got that. We have two questions left. This okay. is a two point question. All right. What is Johnny's job before he opens opens the Cobra Kai dojo? Oh. Right next to oh. drink Shadow Marie. Oh, okay. Yeah. Here we go. He's, he's like a handyman. He's a contractor. Like a, oh my gosh. Like a task Ladies and rabbit. gentlemen, Ron X featuring Shadow Marie gets two points for that one. <laughs> oh my God. He did five and a half. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, to a full t shirt, Shana. She's got a shirt that she already had. All right. She had All the right. sleeve. Now she got the other sleeve. Here is the final question. <laughs> that, this is a... that half point is well earned now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Putting yes. it over. Uh, like, Putting it out of reach. <laughs> All right. This is the this is the final question, oh and boy, here um, we go. it is a two part question. Each part oh. is worth five points. Oh my gosh! So you can get ten points from this, which means that any of you now can win this because oh. because all these half point fallacies are now out the window. All right, here we go. So uh, Dexter is our guest today, and he is uh, working with a show that has been number one on Netflix, but he is not the first person to be on Rise and Shine and have a number one Netflix show. Who has been on Rise and Shine and has also had a number one Netflix show? So you get five points for the guest and five points for the show. Right, X the drink shot of Marie. Oh, I, okay, I mean, uh, for the guest, it uh, would have been Mark, right? Mark is all. Oh, Ooh. sorry, sorry. No. No. Um, Shauna Marie, I'm just letting you know, like, uh, you can have my shirt because we're about to win this. <laughs> it is. I, I, I don't know, like, is this fair? I was on that show, so it's like. Well, um, and I, I don't know. Is it John John no. Briones, Ratchet. All right, John John oh, Briones, Ratchet. Yes, oh, he was our debut yes. episode. If yes. you've been watching on Facebook Live, if you're watching us on YouTube, that will not be our debut episode, but <laughs> uh, because we're all messed up on our timelines. Thank you, Jeremiah, for making us look better than we really are. But that's another story for another day. But anyway, so the final score. Oh my gosh, this is this is rough. So the final score is uh, Dexter three, Fumble Rex two, and Ronnie. I'm sorry, Ron X featuring Shauna Marie, 15 and a half. Oh my gosh. This is, all right. Shauna, go, we got our t-shirt. Thank you, queen. Can, can I still buy a vowel? Can I still buy a vowel? <laughs> and Rex is still X. stuck on wheel. You can buy the letter X. <laughs> I love it. I'm, I'm going to take my shirt three. and go, guys. <laughs> And yes, now Ron then... X, and now Ron X has to leave. She's like leaving, even though she's already won her thing. My goodness! <laughs> All right, well, she's look, like, uh, peace. I'm out. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's like her. That's her, her mic drop. But anyway, um, wow, Dexter, it has been fun having you because, uh, as we've already said before, Dexter is actually a friend of ours. Mm -hmm. So we're always happy to have him, whether it's at a film creative event or whether it's uh, having uh, tacos, having uh, at the Kogi truck or wherever. But we're always happy to have him. Uh, Rex, you have any parting words for Dexter? No, nah, hey, thank you for coming on and for sharing your time, your talent, and your treasure uh, with all of us here at Rise and Shine and Film Creative. I don't know. Thanks for having me. It's been fun. You know, I mean, you know, uh, yeah, no, every time. Fantastic. Please, please do not make this your only appearance. Please come back anytime you want to uh, pimp out your next oh, project. And uh, well, hopefully you'll be hanging out with uh, Johnny and, and Daniel for a few more years to come. But uh, oh, yeah. come yeah, back well, and visit and, us and, times. And check out, well, and check out, uh, you know, season uh, three, which dropped, I think, about a two week. Season three, which by the time we see this on YouTube will have already dropped. So please go on Netflix and mm -hmm. uh, binge watch all 10, ep 10 episodes, right? Yep. Yep. Fantastic. All right. And, and, and it's going to be fun. Oh. Be fun. Hi, this is Walter Bohlst. I'm proud to be one of the co-founders of Philam Creative and serve as a member of the Board of Directors. In case you didn't know about us, 
I'd like to share with you our mission statement. Philam Creative Incorporated educates and advocates for the Filipino American entertainment community and all looking for a collaborative workspace in order to achieve greater representation and career advancement. Although we're based in Southern California, Philam Creative's reach can be felt worldwide. If you're interested in joining us behind the scenes to produce or promote our many programs and initiatives, visit our website at philamcreative.org. That's philamcreative.org. And contact us to learn how you can join our cause. For students, we also have internships available for you to gain valuable experience. Visit us to learn more at philamcreative.org. Do you, do you, you know, I, I guess we should ask this, or, or maybe. maybe you're not allowed. Any, any cool spoilers you can give us or any kind of hints you can give us or are you going to get fired we don't want to we don't want to get you fired. i can't no i i actually cannot say but nothing you know i mean i think i think it's it's i think it's kind of all there in the trailer oh, okay. okay all right i'll say that just watch the trailer closely and it probably gives you enough clues as to you know what's gonna happen fair enough fair enough <laughs> all right well this is dexter adriano he's a good friend of ours i'm yes. ed malillan that's rex ampaga Thank you for joining us on Rise and Shine. Dexter, please stay after. We've got some wonderful uh, prizes to give you behind the scenes. But uh, we want to thank everybody for watching Rise and Shine this week. Uh, please don't forget to uh, donate a few quid to uh, our Venmo at Philam Creative if you are feeling so generous. And uh, don't forget to watch us on Tuesdays on YouTube. On Wednesdays, you can download our podcast. And you can watch us here live on Facebook as well on Saturdays. So a lot of ways you can catch us, Rex. That's a lot of rise and shine. Like everybody's rise and shine diet is pretty full. Wouldn't you <laughs> Three chances, Rex. Three. We are expanding our platform for our debut season of Rise and Shine. And so we want to encourage all of our people, all of our audience around the world, not just here in Southern California, but around the world to catch us and keep uh, being connected to the community through our Rise and Shine morning program. Absolutely. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube. We're everywhere. Uh, please support Rise and Shine. And uh, I think that this might be the best. Oh, no. Guys, guys. I was going to say this guys. might be the best episode because we haven't had uh, her. I uh. was... I was, I broke into my local library and I found this book. It was about the read. teachings. Oh, I read in several languages. Elvish. Elvish. Um, uh, what's that other one? Dothraki, Klingon. Oh. I read several languages, Ed. Anyway, so I found this book and it was all about the art of uh, it was called Be Water by Bruce Lee, and I also found this. Uh, I think it's called a VHS tape called Karate Kid. Oh boy! I think there was a lot of accent marks on it. So I went out. I did everything the video said. I went out to the forest. I found myself. I had an expedition. I saw colors. Uh, so I just got back from that. What did I uh, miss? You can go back. You can go back. Please go. Did Let's I? Okay. Down. Oh, I'm just in time. I'm just in time for the credits. I'm just in time for the credits and my check. Uh, All right. Rise and shine with Philip Creative was created, casted, oh, hosted, produced, uh, written by, oh God, <laughs> directed by Edward J. Malilin and Rex A. Sampaga. Malilin. Malilin. The most, the most Malilin. humble guys. Malilin. Edward J. Malilin. And next day, Sampaga. Our Rise and Shine co hosts, co stars are Kami and my sister Ronnie, who did not tell me that this was happening this morning, and me, because There's nobody reason, wants you here. I'm the only relevant person on the show. I learned a lot being in the forest last night, guys. Jeez, okay. uh, and the stars of Rise and Shine, Please and the away. control freaks of Rise and Shine, Edward J. Malilin, and Rex A. Sampaga, whatever, nobody cares. Rise and Shine with Phil I'm Creative's technical director is Jeremiah. Our stage director is my sister Ronnie. Yeah, thanks for all that. Um, I could have done a better job. You, you have to leave. And finally, you, you have to leave. Finally, today's guest, Mr. Dexter Adriano, editor extraordinaire from Agents of Shield and Cobra Kai. Wow, I should check that show out. I heard it's really great. 
And by the way, Rise and Shine is a production of Phil I'm Creative. And let me guess, I should say here that Phil I'm Creative was founded by, if you can count that as being founded by Ed and Rex. If you want to follow this show online, uh, you can find them, all of them, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all those other stupid places uh, at Rise and Shine FAC. And don't forget that new episodes of Rise and Shine drop every Tuesday on YouTube and you Rise and yet? Shine FAC every Wednesday. Are you done yet? Even though time is relative, those episodes on YouTube will drop Tuesday and the podcast will drop Wednesdays on Rise and Shine. So get your podcast. Um, my name is Veronica, your heroine. Thank you. Out to save the world. Thank you have you. just Chuck watched an episode in the mail. of Rise and Shine. I'll make sure of that, Ed. We'll make sure. We'll make sure. You'll hear from my lawyers. Oh, you will. Okay, you know what? Backstory, Dexter. So for trivia, we were try- actually trying to get my, uh, my partner's mom on the show um, because she is a huge Cobra Kai and Karate Kid fan. And she's just like, she has like, she, she's, you know, I love her. She has made, but she has like, she has major Filipino like auntie vibes. So when uh-huh. my dude called her and he's like, mom, do you want to be on the show? She's like, oh, I'm not, you know, I know all of it. You know, I know all of it. And Johnny, Johnny's so Johnny's so cute. He still he still look good. He still look good. But oh, another well, that, word. Wow. Well, that well, that's you know that's that's a, that's the funniest. The, the well, just kind of what what the Rex and Ed was talking about. That whole movie, it's really about you as a teenager and who you're crushing on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. it. We're talking about oh yeah, Elizabeth Shue, <laughs> and then, you know it's like oh, oh Johnny. Oh, uh, you know, Macchio. It, it's all it's all Tiger Beat stuff. It was Tiger Beat. Tiger oh, Beat. It really yes. was. It was. It was like. <laughs> oh, I it's love Tiger it. Beat stuff. Tiger Beat. I mean, it's real. Like even like even the actors now. I do love how they use like the same actors. And I'm like, you know, you you when you're when you're three episodes in and you've already had like a few to drink, you're just like sitting there. You're like, man, Johnny can still get it. Like Daddy Johnny <laughs> broke down, alcoholic, living in a crappy apartment in Reseda. He can still get it. Look at that! Wow. He can install a TV. He can install a TV <laughs> in the living room anytime. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'll take I'll take broke down Daddy Johnny. Any, any yeah, and then but season two because he's a little he's more you know he's I like how he's like more woke in season two. Um, yeah, and just the, like like uh, Dexter, if you if like you probably talk to the writers of the show too. You could like it. The writing, I, I, I have a right, I'm, I'm actually a writer, like, like in, my, in my background is in writing and the writing is like tight. And it's so, there's so many like awesome themes and so many like, like the, the Easter eggs they put in and just like the arc of every single character. I'm just like, I'm, I'm like mm-hmm. waxing on and waxing off <laughs> because I'm so excited. <laughs> so I can't just like, I can't like no spoilies, but this is like, like season three is gonna be so lit. So lit. Well, and that well, that's why I'm kind of excited. I, I I wanna I wanna see the way I look the way I looked at season three. I was looking at it kind of like a fanboy, and I'm like, yeah, I'd be alright with it. You know what I mean? You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm like so so I'm curious to see if it matches. You know, because that's sometimes sometimes it doesn't because you know because I'm you know I'm I'm a you know when you're working on this show you're more invested so. It becomes a little bit like your baby. So you, sometimes mm-hmm. you don't want to like, you don't want to criticize your kid too much. Right. right. <laughs> it does. They are, they are, they do try to make uh, Larusso. You know, they always make him try to stray so he can come back. Because mm. yeah, because because it's like it's like it's like Johnny is just trying to find his way. Larusso is trying to remind himself of what of what his anchor is he's not yes. lost his way but he's 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 he he needs to do more you need to do more that so you know it's in his yeah, head right. you know and we want him to be we want him to be the avatar and we want johnny to be uh prince Zuku. yeah like yeah. an avatar you know what i mean <laughs> you want you want him you want him to finally, bah, 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 you know, mm. you're, you're, you're trying to get two people who are flawed, who you both kind of cheer for, but both don't and find out what's <laughs> true. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, Ooh, that's part of, that's part of the dynamic of the show is like, you know, it's kind of a bromance. 
It's a little bit of a bromance. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I I get to. Well, I, I really like totally that they. That. Yeah, I really like that they made Johnny like. I mean, especially like in season one, he's really sympathetic. And you're and and like I had to remind myself at some point I was like, wait, this guy was like a total asshole in the movie. He was, but yet you know, like I'm really. I kind of feel bad for him, you know, in, in season one, because he's just, yeah, yeah. you know, he, he, he's like a product of his own, of yeah. all of his excessive stuff. You know I oh, mean? He yeah. party too that hard. That toxic masculinity. Not... So bad. Yeah. I mean, he's a victim so of his own circumstance. I, and I just remember like those two nights, I just, I binged it in three nights. Nice. I, yeah. I was like, it's so easy. I was like, why is this working? Why is this working? I was just like, my head was like, going, whoa, what's going on? And it was, you know, and it's because I think one of the things I think is that it deals with what you're saying about toxic masculinity. It, 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 it's kind of talks about it more nuanced, mm-hmm. right? It's like it the real about, world application of it. Yeah, it, 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 it really says it really is saying this wasn't all black and white, wasn't? It? There's some gray. Mm-hmm. Now, how do you? Feel? And you're like, oh, you know, and that's kind of that soap opera aspect of it. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah, and that's it. It's also a soap opera with the kids. They just completely, completely transfer the magic mm-hmm. with the kids, with Miguel and Robbie oh, I love you know, it. and Sam. You know, they're like all they're all in there. You know? and, then, like and then like season one, Johnny was like also like lightweight racist. Like he was like because his yeah. interactions oh. with Miguel and like oh, yeah. he, he's like he can't even. And then like and then you got that like. You got that callback in season two when like um, when Crease was all like, oh, the little Mexican kid. And then and then uh, Johnny was like, he's Ecuadorian. I was like, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> right? I, I was right? like, yeah. get it right. <laughs> get it right, yeah. Crease. It, it was Which, it was real. I am, I, I am Crease. Yeah, he's going to be that, you know, you know, remember me, old Americana. You know, I mean, that's oh, oh, yes. You know, when men were still men, like yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's he he's he's the he's the Marlboro man for our generation. That's yes. that's a great. <laughs> that, that's a that's a sad but great point. <laughs> hey everyone, Rex here with Rise and Shine. Did you know that you have not one, not two, but three different ways you could check out the show every week? New episodes drop every Tuesday on our YouTube channel at Rise and Shine FAC. And you can listen to this podcast dropping every Wednesday by downloading Rise and Shine wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And if you want to watch us produce the show live, don't forget that we tape on Saturday mornings on Facebook Live, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So that's three ways you can improve your Rise and Shine diet every week. YouTube Tuesdays, Podcast Wednesdays, and live every Saturday on Facebook. Thanks again for watching and listening to Rise and Shine. Rise and Shine. Hey guys, it's Ed. Thanks for listening today. And did you guys know that Rise and Shine is part of the Philam Creative Umbrella? And that we're a registered nonprofit. And as a nonprofit organization, Philam Creative depends on generous donations from fine folks like you to help us to continue to produce great programming like Rise and Shine. Please consider making a donation to help produce shows like Rise and Shine. Our Venmo is at Philam Creative. That's at Philam Creative. And if you don't do Venmo, but you still want to donate a few quid to us, then drop us an email at riseandshinefac at gmail.com. That's riseandshinefac at gmail.com, and we'll help you out. We at Rise and Shine appreciate your generosity. Every dollar helps. Hey, Rex here with Rise and Shine, and I want you to do something for me. Help support Rise and Shine by liking, subscribing, and following the show online. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, all under at Rise and Shine FAC. So follow the show on all social media platforms on all one word at Rise and Shine FAC. Thanks again for all the love and support, and tell all your friends about Rise and Shine. 
Rise and shine! This is Kami. I hope you're enjoying the show. Did you know we have a mailing list? And did you know that you can contact us if you want to say hello to Ed, Rex, Ronnie, Veronica, or even me? Just send us an email at rise and shine FAC. That's one word spelled out rise and shine FAC at gmail.com. Again, that's rise and shine FAC all spelled out at gmail.com. Join our mailing list so you can be the first to find out about the latest rise and shine news. Rise and shine. Hey everyone, this is Ed, and I got a question for you. Did you know that Rise and Shine is only one of the many things produced by Philam Creative? That's right, Philam Creative has been producing great stuff, like Rise and Shine, for over 10 years. If you want to learn more about the premier Filipino American organization that has been the number one advocate for the Asian American entertainment community for over a decade, then visit our website at philamcreative.org. That's philamcreative.org. Learn more about the organization that produces your favorite show, Rise and Shine. Hi, this is Walter Boholst. I'm proud to be one of the co-founders of Philam Creative and serve as a member of the board of directors. In case you didn't know about us, I'd like to share with you our mission statement. Philam Creative Incorporated educates and advocates for the Filipino-American entertainment community and all looking for a collaborative workspace in order to achieve greater representation and career advancement. Although we're based in Southern California, Philam Creative's reach can be felt worldwide. If you're interested in joining us behind the scenes to produce or promote our many programs and initiatives, visit our website at philamcreative.org. That's philamcreative.org and contact us to learn how you can join our cause. For students, we also have internships available for you to gain valuable experience. Visit us to learn more at philamcreative.org. Rise and shine. Hey guys, it's Ed. Thanks for listening today and did you guys know that Rise and Shine is part of the Philam Creative umbrella and that we're a registered nonprofit? And as a nonprofit organization, Philam Creative depends on generous donations from fine folks like you to help us to continue to produce great programming like Rise and Shine. Please consider making a donation to help produce shows like Rise and Shine. Our Venmo is at Philam Creative. That's at Philam Creative. And if you don't do Venmo, but you still want to donate a few quid to us, then drop us an email at riseandshinefac at gmail.com. That's riseandshinefac at gmail.com, and we'll help you out. We at Rise and Shine appreciate your generosity. Every dollar helps. Rise and Shine! Hey guys, Ronnie here. I know my sister Veronica likes to mess with the crew, but we all really work hard to produce a quality program for you. Rise and Shine is produced by Philam Creative in association with RAS Music Group and Millennius LLC. Rise and Shine is written, created, produced, and hosted by Ed Malillan and Rex Sampaga. It also features Veronica Cagneso, Kami Koyamko, and me, Ronnie Cagneso. I'm also our show's stage director, which isn't easy when you gotta keep Ed and Rex in check. And finally, our amazing technical director is Jeremiah Castro. Thanks for tuning in every week to Philam Creative's number one show, Rise and Shine. <laughs>